I'm Zach Farman, this is the Word on the Farm video blog for the week of July 11th. And this week we are now at the All-Star break and so now we get, can really see and take a look at the Giants first half and really start to piece together what they are, what they still need to work on. And coming into the break they are coming in strong having won four of their last five on the homestand and they come in first place by three games and they are looking very strong heading in. They are starting to get a little bit more healthy which is a big part of it. Pablo Sandoval is on a 21 game hitting streak. Nate Sherholt is on fire. Mike Fontenot com comes back and has a three hit game. All things are starting to fall into place for the Giants. Obviously, there's only so much they can do without Freddy Sanchez, without Buster Posey, but all things considered, you look at what the, where the Giants are, what they've lost, what they've gone through this season, it's amazing the fact that they're even sniffing for place, let alone actually hold on, holding on to it by a few games. But looking forward, it's what do the Giants seem to actually clinch the division, be able to move forward, and make an impact in the playoffs. A big part of that, as as I've also, also already mentioned, is going to be Pablo Sandoval and Nate Sheerholtz. The two of them have been the catalyst for this offense. Pablo has been on fire since he's returned to the disabled list. In fact, he's only not had a hit in only one game since returning from the disabled list, and that was almost a month ago. You look at Nate Sheerholtz, who has actually turned into a late-game savior for the Giants. In fact, Bay City Ball has him batting 339 in late and close game situations, and that is incredible for a guy who is really having a career year. And obviously last year the Giants had to have some guys who had career years and that sort of stuff, but you look at Nate to this point, seven home runs, 31 RBIs, he's batting 294. This is a great season for a guy who has already has career highs in all of the major categories. Going forward, like he needs to be able to keep it up, but the one person they need to be able to step it up is Andres Torres at the top of the lineup. More than anybody, he has to be the one to get the offense going and, and really start to steal bases and re wreak havoc on the base paths. Because without him getting on base at the top of the lineup, what Pablo and Nate do doesn't mean nearly as much. Now, obviously this week it's the All-Star break, and it's one of the best times of the year, at least for me, because I love seeing all the best players being in one game at one place at one time. And the one thing, baseball does little things right. Regardless of what our thoughts about Bud Selig or anything like that, baseball does many things correct when it comes to the All-Star game. Some of that is how they celebrate and bring back some of the older players, how it could be how they introduce all the players and have one representative from each team, which I think is one of the best parts about it. I, to be able to see the best pirate player, to be, be able to see the best national player, but do teams that are finishing last place deserve to really have an all-star if they really don't have one? If I'm one of those fans, I want to at least have one guy there. This way I can watch the all-star game and have some sort of interest. This way I can watch my guy get his one at bat, play the field. You never know. He might make a great play. And probably the best event of the entire weekend has to be the Home Run Derby. It's probably the best all-star festivity in any sport. Because there are no judges, there are, there are no sort of factors that interfere with this. It is just sheer power and whether or not you can hit more home runs than the guy who's either batting in front of you or after you. That said, I'm Zach Farmer and this has been The Word on the Farm.